Hi everyone, if you thought that the Panzer IV project was finished, hmm, sorry, but you were wrong. In this video I will show you my experience about how I made my first serious diorama attempt ever. This is Nutia Spencer and welcome to my hobby channel. Let's go for it! Some time ago, with some help of my modeling friends, we designed a basic sketch for this diorama. Basically, this paper contains all the main lines and edges and the exact position for all the different elements. For this diorama I decided to use the styrofoam method, widely used nowadays by modelers, for diorama based construction and the main structure. I found in a building supply store this big piece of light blue foam. For being precise while cutting the foam piece, I used a cardboard template with the same shape as the paper sketch. You can use a modeling knife for cutting this type of materials, but I decided to make my own hot wire cutting machine. When cutting the foam I try to be super careful, hot wire cuts everything super fast, but if you want a good 90 degree angled result, you should be very patient with the cutting process. You can see how the cutting result is super sharp, and also it makes the carved result super cool. I continued adding another layer of foam to make a higher vase, and later cutting and placing the rest of pieces like a foam puzzle until I got the result I was looking for. And finally, this first step vase has now some different levels. Adding different foam parts makes the scene more natural and realistic. Also I made some depression and sloped medium level which will represent the main road. Finally, using some spur foam pieces like a proxy brick wall, I check how the whole vase will look like. Once the vase has been prepared and the main levels defined, it's time to proceed with the vase sides. I bought some basa wood in a craft store and keeping the styrofoam base method, I will seal the sides of the vase with some wooden finish. Finally, I used some double sided tape for fixing the basa wood to the foam. Now, you will only need to adapt properly the basa wood to the surface while creating a curved result. Not so easy, but nice and fast. Completing the wooden step, I cut the excess of balsa wood with a modeling knife, and with some CA glue I filled the gaps between the balsa edges. Before adding any ground texturing product, I made some marks in the area where the brick wall would be placed. After all, just some foam carving was needed to get the appropriate leveling of the wall. For sculpting the terrain, I decided to use this modeling clay. This type is air dry and allows me to adapt it to the surface. First, leaving some white glue in the surface will hold the clay glue to the foam. Prior to this, I made some tests, and I had better results using white glue holding the clay instead of applying the clay in a rough surface for instance. Because this type of materials tend to crack when dry, I will try to apply the clay as thin as possible. These first steps molding and spreading the clay were a little bit uncomfortable. Clay is not very smooth and I had to make some pressure until the surface was completely covered. Also I found that it became easier when placing small amounts of clay and the styrofoam surface could be reached faster with less issues. Once the clay was in place, I used a little bit of water for smoothing out the surface with my finger. This distributed the material and covered all the remaining gaps. With a modeling knife, I removed the excess of material in the edges of the base. That is just an aesthetic step, but it makes the base much cleaner. At the same time, I prepared the foam foundation for the collapsed brick wall. It is important to check properly the fitting of the different pieces so you won't need any extra efforts in the future. As the clay surface was completely smooth, I started applying first a rough texture. Using a toothbrush, I pressed it softly against the surface, applying multiple touches. The texture it creates is really nice. Well, for a correct tank positioning, according to my first idea, First, I used plastic film for protecting the model from clay. Once I was sure and I got the perfect positioning, I pressed the model against the clay. This would help me to create some marks that will guide me when the vase were painted. Another good option for extra texture in the clay surface is to add other different vehicle marks in the ground. Searching in my spare parts box, I found these vinyl KV-1 trucks. So following the same approach as before, I pressed them in the surface creating some variety in the vase. To include some rubber wheel marks, I decided to use this piece from a 135th scale Humvee model. It is anachronistic according to the World War II period, but it will be our secret. 
and no one will know about it, right? Some time ago I started collecting some different ground materials from different and multiple sources. First, I bought these decorative sands for home decor purposes. These little rocks translated into a modeling point of view become super useful for our purposes. For a more realistic rock result, I press them in the clay. Just keep in mind that rocks don't float over the ground. Using some recycled aluminum can, I cut and bend it until I created some basic old drums and metal pieces. These type of pieces are found commonly in the Stalingrad battle photos. Also, I texture the metal a little bit with some Chamia basic putty for representing some light corrosion texture. And finally, I left them in place. The main idea of the diorama is to create a big collapsed brick wall and some big rubble accumulations. Because foam is a cheap material and I wanted to practice with the hot wire cutter, I decided to use more foam for making the bricks. Using some spare foam pieces and cutting them into strips with the same measures, I managed to cut identical pieces at the end. The measures in scale were taken from some internet source and I don't remember exactly where, but I think they work fine. Finally, in approximately 15 minutes, I had more bricks that I'd possibly need for this project. In the base, I spread them around the same area. I was looking for a big brick pile coming from the main wall, so I think I will need some more coats yet. For fixing the bricks to the base, I just used some more diluted white glue. Now that the heavier elements have been added to the ground, it's time to add some texturing using some dirt and fine sand. As I said before, I collected some different types of earth and dirt, so the more variety the better. My first option for fixing these materials was to soak the groundwork with some white glue before spreading the sand. Later, I spread it the different materials around the base. My main goal here was to distribute the different textures in different areas so they will create different finishes, making each type of ground different. Also, I spread more dirt about the brick pile for integrating it with the rest of the base full of rocks and rubble. Finally, because I was not so confident about the first white glue application, I decided to give it another glue layer for a more definitive finish. Using an old blister pack, I cast it some plaster. Once out of the mold, you can break it into small pieces. I covered one of the corners of the diorama using these small pieces of debris as some kind of remnants from a destroyed structure. When the clay and the groundwork is dry, it's time to check everything is okay. I took out this product from Emo, and I used it for filling the small cracks that appear in the dry clay. Also I had some issues with the tank tracks fitting, so I had to add some more dry earth product to fix the problem. Applying first a generous amount of earth product and later pressing the model against the surface. I think the model fitting is much better now. During all this time I've been just showing you how I made the terrain. Now it's time to cover how I made the main scenography piece of the diorama. First I cut some basic foam pieces and I glued them together, creating a building corner. I used some photograph references for creating a destroyed final look. Later, I removed the excess of foam with the hot wire cutter, giving to the piece its definitive shape. Foam is a super versatile material, and it allows you to mark and sculpt every detail on it. At first, I thought it would be harder to work with it, but this material is super soft actually. For representing the brick coat of the wall, first I marked the distance between layers and later I used a modeling knife for cutting through the marks. I tried to represent the main size of the wall bricks with the same size as the ones in the pile of rubble I made in the terrain. I think keeping these type of details in mind makes you improve the general details of the whole diorama. Once the horizontal cuts were made, I also completed the vertical mortar gaps of the bricks. When all the bricks were carved at all, I tried to add more depth to the mortar gaps, first using the same modeling knife as before, but finally I found that I had better results using the tip of my mechanical pencil. Finally I gave the brick wall a more irregular surface using some pliers for pressing different bricks in a random way. This really changed the result of the wall, making it more natural and weathered. Now as the sides of the wall are supposed to be collapsed, it's important to represent heavy deteriorated brick layers. Again, using first the modeling knife and later some pliers, I pull every brick individually, 
removing some strategic brick pieces from the brick wall in a random way really helps to think this is a building wall heavily damaged. As I said before, I didn't expect the foam to be so soft. So, thinking about some texturing process without damaging the foam, I come up to use the old toothbrush for texturing a bit in the brick surface, and I think the result is worth it, at least keeping in mind how super simple the technique is. After having collected some Stalingrad photographs of ruined buildings, I thought it would be a good idea to add a thin coat of mortar on the brick wall. Using some acrylic putty for common uses and an old spatula, I distributed the putty around the surface, leaving a more uniform result in the inner side and a more damage in the outside. I think the result now really enhances the main brick wall and it gives to it a more complexity feeling. Finally, and before completing the wall, it was a matter of adding some details to make the brick wall more realistic. First, using some stretched sprue plastic, I represented a basic water drain pipe. And later, I applied some metal texture using some Tamiya grey putty. Searching again in the spare parts box, I found these two little metal boxes that I will use as some electric controllers placed in the sidewall. This other little detail was taken from the model sprue itself and I will use it for imitating the building numbering. Finally, the last details were taken from some old factory photographs. This loudspeaker was made using scratch materials and some vacuum parts. Unfortunately, I lost the video files, so in its construction. But I can show you some of its original parts. Later, using some evergreen plastic art, I created a basic wall support for the loudspeaker. Even I represented the tiny bolts for holding it. And this was the final result once all the steps were completed. This was my first serious piece of scenography, let's say. And I'm very happy with the result. A few days later, talking with some modeling friends, once all the terrain and wall were set in place. They told me that there was an empty gap in the diorama that should be fitted with a medium-sized structure for a better composition result. Again, searching for historical references was my best friend here. I decided to fill that gap by representing a small section of a few concrete pipes. These type of pieces are seen commonly in the Stalingrad industrial area during the battle. So, why not to add a few of them to the diorama? Using a cylindrical cardboard piece cut and detailed a bit, I represented the main shape of the concrete pipes. For representing the concrete surface texture, I took again my Tamiya grey putty. Applying some touches and creating an irregular texture changed the look of the concrete pipes. For a perfect adjustment to the ground, I used the Amo Earth product. And I'll be sure that pieces will fit perfectly with no gaps. Later, every piece was glued to each other using CA glue, so it will be easier for painting them in the future. And last step was to add some mechanical spare parts. I'm not an expert in this type of subjects, but I think that these 135 Whipple model wheels will fit perfectly in my diorama. For representing some bearing and other stuff of mechanical parts, in the terrain base, just gluing them quickly with some CA glue and later spreading some fine sand about the parts will do the job nicely and they get fully integrated at the end. So this is the final result of the terrain base. I'm super excited to show you my first serious attempt of creating a 135th scale diorama. It has taken more amount of time than I thought at the beginning. These kind of projects are much different than building and painting a model kit, because every detail and composition depends on you. And of course, you have to keep everything in mind for getting a good final result. On the other hand, I don't mean I regret about creating the drama. In fact, I'm super happy with the result, and it was something that I wanted to make some time ago, but I didn't feel confident enough until now. Of course, there are plenty of things that could be improved, but I'll leave them for now and I'll try to make them better in the future. By this moment, all I want is to start painting the drama. I know it will be hard, time consuming and will take big amounts of paint. Also, I will have to change my painting way. For example, foam can't be weathered with enamels or the whole drama will start melting but I can't wait until I see this set fully painted. In the next episode, I will cover the complete painting of the diorama, showing both the terrain approach and how I painted the brick wall. So, 
I hope you found this video useful or at least interesting. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.